Hello, everybody. Welcome into a Wednesday edition of the Computer America Show. Um, uh, we've got a great program, as always, planned for you here on tonight's program. In the uh, first hour, we're going to do computer and technology news brought to you by Slimware Utilities. They are the official optimization software of Computer America. And then hour two, the Gizwiz is here with us. Dick DiBartolo, Mad Magazine's maddest writer, uh, with some really funky stuff that he finds for us on the Internet. So sit back, relax, and join the show. And we'll be starting in uh, about uh, two minutes. Two minutes until showtime. One minute until showtime. <clears throat> I'm assuming that Dick will just uh, come on and be quiet as he normally does. Yeah, he's pretty good about that. Yeah, he is. If we get a call and you're not in screaming, screening, uh, you, you can get in pretty quickly, right? You don't have to worry about that ahead of time? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, good. Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live, it's America's longest-running national radio talk show on computers, Computer America, hosted by national columnist Craig Crossman. Look for Craig's weekly column in your favorite newspaper. This show is being beamed nationwide at ComputerAmerica.com. Keep it here for technology news, computer products, guest interviews, and your phone calls. You're listening to Computer America. Hello, and welcome into the Computer America show. It's the nation's longest-running nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers. Computer America is heard around the world and coast to coast. And I'm your host, Craig Crossman. And I'm your co-host, Ben. And uh, it's Wednesday. It's hump day. And uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's going to be an interesting show tonight. Um, uh, normally we have a guest the first hour, but the, when uh, Dick DiBartolo appears on the show, he always likes to do the last hour of the show. So... Uh, we're going to proceed everything with uh, computer and technology news. Uh, that's, of course, brought to you by Slimware Utilities. They are the official optimization software of Computer America. And then Dick's got some really fun stuff. Um, if you want to follow along, uh, we have um, all the things that Dick's going to be talking about uh, on our show notes page. Just go to our show notes page at ComputerAmerica.com. Well, we've done some consolidation, by the way. We have, we have uh, consolidated things. The screen is tighter. Uh, there's less information, but links to uh, relevant information from the home page. But if you click the show notes button, which is again on the home page, uh, you'll it'll take you to today's show, which is uh, the uh, 28th of January, and uh, you'll see everything there. Um, uh, you'll see our, our, the news, and then some of the things that Dick's going to be talking about. Uh, this is kind of including. This is kind of he has a, a different kind of exercise band, which is interesting. And another way, another gadget that lets you answer your front door from anywhere, even from a different state or any other country, really. So you can now you can answer your front door without being home. Uh, also, a device that lets you play with your pet from around the world. 
<laughs> and so much more. So that's home there. For pets. Yeah, uh, and eh, exactly. So you can uh, play with your pet even though you're not home. But from any place, you can keep track of them. So he's got some really great gadgets as he he finds. And uh, and again, we have the link there, and, and uh, we have the link to the special Gizwiz dot uh, biz page that he sets up for Computer America. Or if you go there, just click on his banner that says "Non Paid Lackey Fun uh, Computer America." And uh, it'll take you to the all, all of the stories we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, so, uh, anything uh, of consequence that you'd like to mention uh, before we get the road on the show, as they say? I believe they say the opposite, but uh, no, I I have nothing to report. Okay, all right, well, good. Uh, uh, so let's do some computer news. We'll start off the show with that. Oh, uh, by the way, let me just mention if you have a comment. Or question that you uh, you know uh, on tonight's show about anything we're talking about, or maybe even something that's uh, not re not relevant in the first uh, not relevant to what we're talking about because um, um, uh, we don't have a guest in the first hour. You can call us and just get your question answered or a comment. It's three four seven eight eight four eight 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 one. That's three four seven eight eight four eight 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 one. That number will get you on and get you through. We also have email. Yeah, a special email inbox set up when we're live and on the air, and it is live, L-I-V-E, uh, at ComputerAmerica.com. You can also join us in a live interactive chat room. Just go to our homepage at ComputerAmerica.com, and uh, you'll see right there, it says chat and live video uh, on the homepage. Uh, just click on that, and it'll take you to uh, a split screen on the left-hand side, You'll see the entry for uh, how to enter into the uh, IRC chat room. You just put in a, uh, a nickname. That's the name you'll be known by when you go in there. Uh, click the uh, uh, connect button that's on there, and your browser will move you into the uh, Computer America uh, 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 Computer America chat room. Yes, they are uh, so they're commenting the chat room now. They wonder if I'm at a different location, now, or do I just have a different bat? No, I am at a different location. Okay, I have. I am now. I mentioned earlier this week that you had moved to your Florida offices. Yeah, I am now in my Florida offices. That's absolutely correct. So I am here now, as opposed to the Carolinas location. So I'm here, and Ben is down in Florida as well. He he, he ran like a chicken from the cold. <laughs> yeah, and it was a and the, it was a it was a huge storm too, as you could all see. Yeah, it was pretty bad. No, uh, no, don't even give him that much credit. It was just cold in general. Yeah, it was cold. wasn't even storm related. Yes, exactly. So, um, <clears throat> so that was the uh, the thing. So I, I I took the dogs, packed them up, and we all head on down to Florida, uh, which well, turns out to be a, a fairly wise decision. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, yes, Ben has moved his webcam. Not can now you have a nice profile view of him. And uh, what we're talking about is on the chat room on the right hand side of the chat room page is our live Computer America video streaming uh, page. Uh, which you can watch. And when you go to the chat room, it'll just start up automatically. And then you can not only listen to the Computer America show, but you can also watch the Computer America show. You can see myself, you can see Ben, and usually you can see our guest. Uh, tonight you will be able to see Dick DiBartolo uh, when, he, uh, when he comes up the program uh, in, in about an hour or so, a little less than an hour. So those are all the different ways you can interact with us here on Computer America. And so uh, I say uh, let's uh, let's get started with the, some computer news. All right. All right. Tonight's computer and technology news is brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. You can visit them at slimwareutilities.com to clean, speed up, and optimize your Windows system for for free. That's right, for free. Absolutely free. Everything at slimwareutilities.com is completely free. This is not a setup. This is they're not setting you up for anything. You, this, you don't get them and then use them for a little bit and then pay for them, which they call a freemium model. Uh, there's no deluxe, super deluxe versions. You get it. You you download them and you use them completely for free. All of them are there. So head over to uh, over head over to slimwareutilities.com. Download them all. You'll be happy. At, you did, and you'll thank us for it. SlimmerUtilities.com. And the first story tonight is um, I have to stand up and applaud uh, for uh, uh, YouTube. Uh, uh, <laughs> Craig's ever ever going crusade against Flash. 
Yes, against Flash. Now, I'm not talking about the Flash. <laughs> Because of the little TV series on the CW. I'm actually enjoying that, by the way. But no, we're talking about Adobe Flash. And this according to Maximum PC, Paul Lilly. He says, YouTube punts Adobe Flash in favor of HTML5. And why not? I mean, HTML5 does, does most of everything you needed to do. And uh, the, he's calling it, he's agreeing with us. He's saying it's a major win for open standards. And uh, he goes on to say, thanks to the continued advancement into HTML5, YouTube has decided to kick Adobe Flash to the curb and default to the open standard instead for playing videos. Now, YouTube would have made the move earlier, but said there were limitations that prevented HTML5 from becoming its preferred platform, most notable the lack of support for adaptive bitrate, or ABR, that allows the streaming site to show more videos with less buffering. Uh, adaptive bitrate streaming is critical for providing a quality video experience for viewers, allowing us to quickly and seamlessly adjust resolution and bitrate in the face of changing network conditions. This was according to a, a blog post uh, on YouTube. <coughs> ABR has reduced buffering by more than 50% globally and as much as 80% on heavily congested networks. Media source extensions also enable live streaming in game consoles like Xbox and PS4 on devices like Chromecast and in web browsers. Now YouTube said it's been working with browser vendors over the last four years along with the broader community to close the gaps and get to this point. Now satisfied with the state of HTML5, YouTube now uses the HTML5 video tag. Okay, that's the little video and the little braces there. Uh, uh, greater than and less than actually. By default in Chrome, Internet Explorer 11, Safari 8, and in beta versions of Firefox, the Google-owned streaming site said. They're also quoted as saying, we, we're also depreciating the old style of Flash, that's the object, uh, embeds, and our Flash API, uh, YouTube added. Uh, we encourage all embedders to use the iFrame API, which can intelligently use whichever technology the client supports. By making the switch to the uh, uh, by making the switch uh, to the HTML5 for video, YouTube joins content providers like Netflix and Vimeo, along with companies such as Microsoft and Apple that have backed the open standard. Yes, Apple backs an open standard. They're not all proprietary. Um, so I'm very pleased to see this. I mean, uh, how many times, you know, I'm you know. I have my Adobe Flashes to automatically update, but it's 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 one more thing that that kludges up the system, and I have to, and it loads in a special uh, you know plugin for the browser, okay. and and and, uh, and then I'll, once in a while it says, oh, Adobe Flash, you know, uh, my my uh, browser will say Adobe Flash crashed, you know, we need to restart it, and that little little uh, little yellow uh, line banner will open up at the top of the window that I'm looking at, and I have to restart it again. Uh, it's a pain, you know, it's old technology. HTML5 is designed to do anything and everything that Adobe Flash does and Java does, so you don't have to have all these additional little pieces that are really like retrofits. They're like add-ons, they're like afterthoughts. Uh, oh, well, we can't do this in HTML, so we need to add this. Well, now HTML can do all of that. You don't need Flash. You don't need Java. Um, why, you know, get rid of it. Clean out your system. It's that much less junk that you have on your computer, and uh, get rid of it, and 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 then just enjoy it, and and not be uh, bothered with all these updates and annoying. Uh, you know, oh, you have to upgrade this and you have to update this. Um, I'm hoping eventually that uh, Adobe is going to see the light. And, Although uh, I'm. Oh. I, I, although I'm with you, it seems like Flash was a victim of being too large because everyone had to use it. Everyone used it. It, it was so ubiquitous. And then not, not only that, but like it couldn't update fast enough for as many people who wanted to target it for malware and for security threats. Yeah, it's so, another bad thing. Yeah. It, it, well, I... Just it, just because everyone knows everyone has it, therefore they pick it apart piece by piece. Most software doesn't have to deal with those kind of issues. Yeah, that that's very true. But 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 
nonetheless, they do. I mean, these Flash and, and Java are subject. Most of the changes and updates they do are because of security issues, not because they're adding new features, you know, or new abilities. Uh, it's just that, that well, we found out we found another exploit in Java, so here's the fix for that, and we found another exploit, possibly, you know, that uh, that for a Flash, we need to fix that. Here, here's the update. And do it. Yes, you can put your you can tell Flash and, and Java to update automatically, but still, it, you're gonna it's gonna interfere with what you're doing. And I, if I had a buck for every time Flash crashed or Java crashed or caused my system to crash, in a modern operating system that's supposed to be immune to most of this stuff, uh, and for the most part now it, it does, but still it's an annoyance. It's bothersome. And why do that when the actual browser itself? The HTML5 browser now is capable of doing all of the things that these so these these add-ons, uh, these extensions that, that that they do. Get rid of them. Let's just use HTML5, and I think all will be right in the world. You know, um, Adobe has many. It's this is not the all sole income uh, for Adobe. You know. Uh, they. Uh, this is. Uh, it's I, I. I really don't know where them. Like maybe enterprise, but Flash really doesn't make them money. It's just a. You like it's just a program. Yeah, it really is. I don't think they do. I think the the way they make money is that you can buy. Uh, what is it? The application allows you to write Flash applications. Yeah, that too. Yeah, that 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 cost a few hundred dollars, and and uh, Adobe was making some money that way. But you know, let's kick it to the curb. You, Adobe, you've got. You've got uh, uh, Photoshop. You've got a million other products. Um, of course, this is this is simply for YouTube. So it's not like Flash has gone everywhere on the web. It's no. just that's just YouTube. I'm hoping though that this is the harbinger of things to come. That we're going to see more and more services using things like Flash and Java less and less. So we just don't have to bother with them anymore. And uh, it's my hope that this you know this is just yet m another. Um, another company that's uh, kicking it to the curb, and it's a, and eventually, hopefully, we won't see it anymore. But hey, anyway, congratulations, great job, YouTube, great decision, and uh, uh, we're we're all for it here at Computer America. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, uh, yeah, mostly for it. <laughs> Nothing wrong with with legacy hardware. It's just, you know, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'm I think that this is a, a good move in the right direction. Okay. All right. So uh, yeah, this next story is uh, you'll actually like this one. Apple uh, last last quarter posted the highest ever profits for any company ever. Mm hmm. Wow. Like that's it. it more than oil. More than Windows. Or uh, I'm sorry. More than Microsoft. More than any oil company. More than Monsanto. More than anyone. Any company in history. They. they any company in the history of ever. Yeah. So. Uh, but this article that I found though was from CNET. It says that uh, that Apple rings up big holiday sales thanks to larger screen iPhone 6. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the iPhone 6 didn't just surprise the phone, uh, didn't just supersize the phone screen. It also supersized a Apple's financial results. Uh, the company on Tuesday reported the best sales quarter in its 38-year history as demand for its newest smartphones, the 4.7 iPhone 6 and the 5.5 iPhone 6 Plus, soared beyond analyst expectations. Wow. Uh, the company said it sold 75-ish million units. Wow. During this period, much higher than the 66.5 million they were expecting. That's off by a lot, and analysts usually aren't, usually aren't off by a lot. Hmm. Um yeah, no, so that's 46% more devices than the record 51 set by a year earlier, obviously by themselves. So uh, Apple also projected strong sales for the quarter thanks to continued demand for its newest models uh, that went on sale in September. And not only that, though, they said that a, a large chunk of their, uh, of their new revenue came actually from China. You, you, uh, you're used to hearing all things about China and how Apple outsources and creates their products in China to lower cost, but this time China actually wants their stuff, and they're and they're an emerging market. Yeah. So uh, Apple generates more than half its revenue from its smartphone business, and the iPad represents more than 10 percent of the first fiscal quarter, which ends in December. is typical is typically Apple's largest quarter of the holiday season, and introduction of the latest iPhones. 
Uh, duh, 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 reading on here, uh, Apple also benefited from strong demand for Macintosh computers during the period. It sold about 5.52 million Macs. Craig, uh-huh. you're not alone. No. <laughs> not alone. So 5.52 million Macs, uh, up from 4.84, da, 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 number, number, number. But that's about it. Just know that, indeed, they did post the highest ever earnings. Yeah, it's interesting because the increase in Mac sales, again, according to CNET, comes at as the rest of the PC market struggles. Uh, P- worldwide PC shipments slid 2.4%, uh, and Apple held on to its new position as the fifth biggest computer vendor in the world. So uh, kudos to them. So Apple isn't going anywhere, obviously. They're a cash-rich company. Um, there is one thing, the, the, uh, according to the story, that one thing that is slowing down from Apple, you, you want to guess what that is? I have no idea. The iPad demand. It, it remains the weak spot in Apple's results. Uh, the tablet unit sales dropped 18% to 21.4 million uh, uh, units. Um, they, 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 they attribute this to the large screen smartphones, including the iPhone 6 Plus. They're sort of eroding the demand for tablets because now you can do a lot of what you're doing with the iPad now with the iPhone 6 Plus. Um, it's a bigger screen, you know. It's not as big, but it's it's it is. Uh, like I bet if if people who have it, they're probably not dissatisfied with it. No one's unhappy with their iPad. No, no, it's just. No. I guess people are finding it hard to justify the cost of an iPad when they know they need a phone, and the new phones. There's a lot of real estate there. They're they yeah. they are legitimate phablets. They're phone tablets, hybrids. Yeah. So there, I, I could definitely see the new phones eating into the tablet market. And then that can draw the fact that we've talked about before, the tablet market is saturated. It, it's reached this point where people who want a tablet have their tablet, and really tablets aren't uh, becoming obsolete. Like, like they're, not getting rid of their, they're not getting rid of their old tablets for new tablets. They're just kind of sitting on them. Well, you know what's going to happen though, because uh, now the, the the iPad Air two, okay, that's the newest one, and the iPad Mini three. Uh, I'm thinking that the next generation, when they're going to come up with an iPad Air three, or they're going to come up with something that's even thinner and smaller, they're going to keep making these things thinner and smaller. Eventually, the people with you know who have the older generations of iPads, like the the original iPad Air or something like that, are going to say, okay. Uh, now it's like three generations between that. I'm ready to buy another one. So I think we may see a spike in the iPad sales uh, because the next generation is going to be like three uh, three generations uh, between them, and that'll motivate people to go and buy new new equipment. So I'd say maybe by this Christmas, when they introduce uh, the next generation, uh, we'll see a uh, an uptick in the uh, tablet for for iPads. Anyway, that's my prediction. Mm, I'm going to go with a strong maybe. Okay. And I say strong maybe because it might not work out. That, it, who says that because your ta- your tablet is three generations behind, it can't do anything that you want it to do? It, uh, until it shows signs of age, and it, to me it seems like the people who are using them, they aren't doing applications that will show age. When you use a computer, uh, new operating systems come out, new... Uh, yeah, new programs that require more resources to come out, then computers start showing their age. It's just when uh, tablets, tablets are they're being used as e-readers and, and, and to watch a movie and play a few games. There's, it's not like they're ever going to show their age in any meaningful way. Mm-hmm. So it, it, until people really feel like they want a new tablet, they're not going to buy one. It, it's not that... It, but it's not going to come from, oh, it's three years old, I need a new one, like a phone or like a computer. It's something completely different. Uh, well, um, and also, you know, as, as uh, I, I, I agree with you to a certain extent, but I, I think that this next holiday season when Apple comes, if Apple comes out, and I'm sure they are going to come up with a, the next generation iPad, it's going to be, you know, way super, super thin, and it's going to have more battery life, and it's going to have, you know, they're they're and probably adding new features and new abilities that they'll put people will say, okay, I'm ready to go to the next one, and then they'll waterfall it down to the kids or something, and because the, they want to get a new one. Um, I'm thinking that's what's going to happen. At least that's I I see. Maybe. It. Okay. All right. Now, uh, um, here's something really interesting. Uh, 
you know, my wallet has used to be really huge. It's getting thinner and thinner and thinner as I'm taking more and more things out of my wallet and transferring them to my smartphone. Um, I used to have all these loyalty cards. Uh, I can now put them all on, on, on a key ring. Uh, it's called key ring. It's a, an application on my iPhone. Uh, all the different things, uh, ad identifications, what have you. I'm getting more and more of them onto the smartphone and they're where I'm leaving all the loyalty cards at home, and my wallet is that getting thinner and thinner and thinner, which is nice. Well, evidently, according to Gadget, Delaware now wants to put your driver's license on your phone. This is kind of cool. So uh, for all the recent talks of moving to digital wallets, you can't really ditch the old school kind yet. You still need to carry physical copies of your driver's license and other forms of ID, but if you live in Delaware you may eventually have one less reason to worry when you leave your purse or wallet at home. Uh, the state's Senate recently passed a resolution asking the Division of Motor Vehicles to research a digital driver's license that you would store in an app on your phone. See, this is cool. Uh, while many of the details still have to be worked out, you'd use some kind of biometric security, such as your face, fingerprint, or voice, to get access on top of a code. There's no timetable for when Delaware would test these licenses, but it may not take long given that the state's development partner, uh, Morpho Trust, has been working on the technology for a while. You know, th this is really cool. I mean, because uh, if we can start, I mean, we can now start carrying legal documents on our smartphones. This is going to just, um, it's, it's just one more great thing that you can do. I mean, we where you can do our bank. There's no reason you, you, you can't. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, uh, I haven't seen ATM cards come out yet, but I, but the, I'm sure. We, I mean, you can do things like now. For example, if I get a check, I can deposit the check to my, with my smartphone. I don't have to go to the bank now and go to the window or go to the ATM. I can deposit the check directly with my smartphone. Um, I actually take it back where you haven't seen anything with ATMs. I believe some. Banks with Apple Pay, you can actually walk up to them and get quick cash. That's good. That's good. So, yeah. so eventually, if if things like Apple Pay and other forms of it come about, uh, that's your driver's license and your credit card, debit card, what have you. Mm -hmm. That's your money. That's your identification. Loyalty cards have been on there for a long time. Your smartphone is quickly, quickly replacing your wallet. Yeah, it is, and 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 we're going to see more and and more and more legal documents, like. Driver's licenses and things of that. Maybe uh, I know, for example, my auto insurance card. Now I don't. That's, I don't carry that either. That's uh, uh, that's I. I can actually display the auto insurance card right on the smartphone, and it's legal. You can present it to any. If you have an accident or something, you can just show it to the law enforcement office, and then they'll accept it. Uh, it we're, we're seeing. Uh, I guess make, next will what be voters registration cards? You know <laughs> that'll be. Online. I am waiting for the day that voting is online. I would vote in every single <laughs> county election, state election, federal election, every election. Doesn't matter. If I could just sit down and say, okay, the polls open today. I can sit down at my computer, enter an address, enter my social security number and my private information to vet, you know, to verify who I am, and then just go ahead and. You know, yeah, votes that that would be perfect. Yeah, and but, it, 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 it's going to happen eventually. It Ben, it will. I it will happen eventually. Uh, maybe not for another couple few years, but it's going to happen eventually because we're able to do more and more online. And there's no reason why we can't. Well, I mean, why, there's no reason why you have to go to the polls to vote uh, when you can do it because it'll get more people to do it. More people will interact with it. Okay. And initially, there'll be you know some hackers of people trying to get in, but they're gonna they'll 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 figure that out, and uh, and we'll be able to do the vote, and we'll be able to do it from the comfort of our own homes or smartphones. That's that's what they're worried about is some kind of fraud or yeah. what have you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but eventually that will. Uh, I think that's all going. That's obviously a key a tantamount to on the minds of everybody who's who's doing this, and so they'll they'll figure out ways to to. Uh, Anyway, to finish the story, it says, however, soon this op, as soon as this po option pops up, it won't mark the death of old school licenses. As officials are quick to note, there are too many instances where going all digital could pose a problem. 
What if someone steals your phone shortly before a cop pulls you over, or your your battery dies right when the nightclub wants to verify your age? If the virtual license goes ahead, it will most likely serve as a convenience for the those times when you already have your phone in hand. You know, come on, the bad. I, I want to get into the nightclub. I want to buy a drink. Oh, my my phone just died. Well, okay. Well, you don't get the drink. You know, that's it. It's like, oh, I forgot my license. It's tantamount to that. It's not going to happen. That's that's a silly example, and I think that that uh, for the most part, that's not going to that not really be an issue. Uh, um, I'm even surprised Gadget even said that. Because that's 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 a silly thing, uh, um, but I'm all for virtual licenses. I'm I'm all for anything that gets more of my information and the things that I have to carry in a wallet, get it onto my smartphone. I'm all for that. I really am. You agree? Oh, uh, uh, by the way, uh, we didn't mention this on the air, but because it it skews slightly political, but. It's still technology, very, very much so. In that, I actually had to use uh, healthcare.gov to oh, really? get health insurance. Yes. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Yeah. So, uh, because it's not provided through my workplace, cough, 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 cough. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I actually went through and used healthcare.gov. And if you recall, when it first came out, it suffered along the same lines as many of the, uh, oh, what do you call them? Many, many of the other tech releases be it phones or computers or uh, even software and operating systems, there's a lot of bugs. And I guess they, they were hoping that all the bugs were, were going to be worked out well beforehand, but of course when you open the floodgates and let people in, there's going to be bugs aplenty. So it was actual news when it first came out that the government spent X amount of dollars to build this site, and it was buggy, it was slow, it was unusable, yada, yada, yada. Well, I waited about a month and a half mm -hmm. while all the bugs were worked out, all the kinks were worked out, mm -hmm. and the stories died down and all the hyperbole went away. And healthcare.gov, admittedly, it's clunky in a few places. But then again, it has to be clunky because it's dealing with uh, it's dealing with other people's sites because healthcare.gov has to aggregate information from pretty much every available healthcare provider. Yeah. in your area and available to you. So it has to aggregate all of them and yeah. then... But the government is still catching up. I mean, I know, for example, I can't pay my Social Security uh, uh, insurance, uh, health insurance, online yet. It's yes still... and no. Yes and no. All right, we're going to take a little break. We'll continue on with more uh, computer technology here on the Computer America Show. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Hey everyone, have you heard about the No No Hair Removal Device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional, quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for No No Hair Removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my No No. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No No has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors, so it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the No-No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card, and you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No-No hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-5415. That's 800-953-5415. 800-953-5415. Hi, this is Craig Crossman, host of the Computer America Show. You have important meetings to schedule, your company's getting ready for its IPO, and you're in charge of the PTA fundraiser this month. So how do you coordinate everyone to be available at the same time? Are you still using emails, phone calls, even text messages to schedule meetings with a group of people? How's that working out for you? Not so great, huh? It's a fact that every day, millions of people suffer from scheduling headaches. Well, with Doodle, scheduling meetings with a group of people is quick and easy. With Doodle, you can easily propose available times to each member. Each one checks off the times that they are available, and then you simply pick the time that works best for the group, all in an easy-to-read display that integrates with your existing calendar. Nothing could be more simple. Give Doodle a try for free, and like millions of Doodle users, you'll truly see how easy it is to find the perfect date and time for all your meetings. That's www.doodle.com.
I thought I told you not to sneak up on me. This is Marty Winston with a new Stips Bulletin Review for a Computer America. This time, the Olight S20R Baton and Dock Flashlight. It's a chapstick-sized rechargeable lithium battery inside a Tootsie roll size everyday carry light. And that's something we might expect in a rechargeable flashlight. But the Olight S20R rechargeable lead baton light adds layers of extra useful features. The cleverest piece is a small triangular charging dock that not only gets powered over USB, it has a pass-along 2-amp USB charging port. The dock is automatically lined up with the charging contacts on the magnetic base of the light. That magnetic base is strong enough to hold the light horizontally when working on a car or in a circuit breaker panel. A single button on the side of the light selects high, which is 550 lumens, good for two hours, or medium, which is 120 lumens, good for nine hours, or low, which is five lumens, good for 120 hours per charge, or with a double press, a bright strobe mode. Bottom line, the Olight S20R baton flashlight and dock provide a handy combination for keeping a fully charged and very capable LED flashlight at hand. This is Marty Winston with a new Stips Bullet Review for Computer America. Welcome back to the Computer America show. That was Marty Winston with a new Stips Bullet Review. Marty uh, says hmm? he's running out of ways to say hello. <laughs> Tell them to go to different languages. Um, <laughs> seriously, there's like 140 some odd languages, and there are multiple ways to say hello in English. So there has to be a lot of ways to say them in in other languages. Um, so uh, welcome back to the Computer America Show. It is 34 minutes past the hour. We're doing computer and technology news, brought to you by Slimware Utilities. Um, yeah, and 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 I was just regaling the audience with my personal experience with uh, healthcare.gov. Yeah. Because in the news, it received a lot of flack. It was uh, slow, buggy, un, uh, to quote a couple people, unusable, huge waste of money, what have you. Just two, but just a month and a half later, when there was not a huge swarm of traffic, when there was not uh, just people poking at it, trying to figure out ways to break it. My personal experience when I went there, I put in my personal information. They they found me right away. They found uh, providers in my area uh, who could. Uh, provide insurance for me, and even though it was a government-run deal, it was actually not the worst online experience I've had with setting up an account, because I've tried to delete my Yahoo account, and that was ten times worse than trying to get health care. Well, you know, you're right. A lot of times, well, companies will make it hard or very difficult uh, to you for you to leave them. Uh, they will bury it the way the you know, the link the you know that that you, so you can stop using a service. Uh, typically, they make it extremely difficult to do, and uh, they think, well, I don't know what the, the the thoughts are behind that. They say, oh, if we make it really hard, they won't want to do it. No, it just makes well, they make it really hard. They're hoping they'll just walk away and forget about it. Yeah. But if, but for insurance for something as crucial as health insurance, I really didn't have a problem with it. Yeah. Uh, again. Completely personal experience. Don't take it as as rule of thumb. It's just my my experience was so polar opposite from everything I've heard about the website that I thought it was worth bringing up. And and of course this followed on the story about uh, was, what was it Dakota, Minnesota, one of those states. Yeah. 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 Uh, wanting to put your driver's license on your phone. It's government and technology do not always have to be just oil and water. They can mix and to some surprisingly good results. Yep, exactly. Uh, but again, I'm for everything that uh, allows you to put those documents on your smartphone. I mean, it's just one, one less thing you have to worry about. And they say, oh, what if you lose your smartphone? Well, you know, come on. What if you lose your wallet? It's the same thing. It's probably worse, actually, if you lose your wallet. At least with your smartphone, I think you have you have a little bit more protection, you know, uh, especially if you're using stuff in the cloud. And um, so, I, well, I mean, if if you have your smartphone and you lose it, especially if it, if it's an iPhone or one of the newer phones, you can break it. So it, it, it's especially if you have your credit cards, debit cards, driver's license, insurance cards, everything. You break the phone, no one can go around claiming they're you with your identity, with your paperwork. Exactly. I mean, I mean, it's it's far more safe 
to have the stuff on your smartphone than it is to carry it in your wallet. Uh, uh, so. But of course, then people play the, the whole devil's advocate. Well, what happens when you leave the house when your phone's not charged? Then you're walking around with no money, no identification until you charge your phone. <laughs> and it's one of the necessary evils, but well, you paper, learn. Co paper copies never go away, but the ease and the ease of use and accessibility of electronic should not be shunned just because it could fail. Yeah, uh, and I agree with you. I mean, you can always find what ifs. You can say, well, you know, what if your wallet, you left your wallet, and, and there's a fire, and, you, and your wallet burns down. You know, then you have to go. Ahead. What if your identical twin finds <laughs> your phone, exactly. knows your password through telepathy, right. and passes himself off as you? You right. are boned. It, it gets to the point where it gets to be ridiculous. Bottom line is, when you look at the ease, the convenience of having everything on your on your smartphone. The smartphone is more than your phone. It's your it's like your wallet. It's it's a it's a very important part of your, uh, you know, you, your 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 identity and things that you carry. I mean, it's like you know, when Germany, you, you the old the old when the war, you had to carry your papers. Let me see your papers, please. You know, I mean, or your passport when you go uh, abroad. I mean, these are documents that you have to carry with you. Well, your smartphone should be just as important. And you know, and I predict eventually, we'll have things like your passport. On your smartphone. I mean, we're, we're going to see more and more legal documents uh, making it to you know to electronic versions, because especially uh, passports. I would think that it's going to be even much more. It's going to be harder to counterfeit because there's nothing to counterfeit now. Then you know you, you're going to uh, anytime you want to validate a passport, you you you'll there'll, there'll be NFR. There'll be ways for them you know that to to detect it. People it's always real. have. And people always have it in their mind that there's some super hacker out there in the movies who can yeah. replicate anything, hack any code, defeat any any uh, validation, authentication, yeah. who, who can do whatever you want on the fly, and he's untouchable, he goes anywhere he wants. Yeah. Honestly, unless there's a very glaring open hole, mm -hmm. they're not going to hack it on the fly. They're not going to hack it. They're walking through the airport and they hack their electronic passport and they walk through. It's it's going to, it's going to take people hundreds, if not thousands of hours, if it were a, a legal document with some actual good coding behind it. it, it in fact, it may never be uh, it may never be crackable. Look at Bitcoin. That thing's being used by hackers, and even they say, well, this is pretty much foolproof. Yeah. There's ways to make things secure and electronic at the same time. It's not one or the other. Right, and exactly. And, 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 it's the same, and you have the same issues with the paper documents. I mean, they're getting it to the point where it's, it's, it's getting to be crazy. I mean, look at even currency, you know, for counterfeiters. I mean, the uh, Canadian $100 bill. Yeah. It's amazing. It has a holographic uh, triceratops on it, and then there's a rocket ship on the back with uh, thrust uh, exhaust, and it's all you know, it's all holographic foil, whatnot. Yeah. So it shines different colors. It's it, it looks like a child just went nuts with the crayons, but yeah. they, they did everything about that just to make sure you can't counterfeit it. You can't duplicate it. Yeah, and, and the U.S. currency is getting the same way. Uh, the one hundred dollar bill is usually the first to 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 get the the new technology, and the, because they have to, because you know people with with uh, color printers have been able to to duplicate these other things, so they've got to find some other way of doing it. And eventually, uh, it's going we're we're going to use less and less paper in our documents, and even our currency. I think eventually that's we're we're going to get we're going to get virtually paperless. Well, it, yeah, if we look for, far enough down the road, but I. I feel like we should think immediately what's going to happen in five years, what's going to happen in ten years, uh -huh. and paper is still going to be around, paper licenses, paper money, paper thing like that, but I think in the next ten years, there you're going to have the option mm -hmm. to have all of that digitally replaced. Yeah. And you, you're, you're still going to be issued a paper birth certificate. You're still going to be issued a paper social security number. Yeah. You're still going to be using paper cash here and there, but there's going to be ways around it thanks to technology. Yes, and it's just going to make our your life easier. I really yeah. do. Really uh, <clears throat> and hopefully voting. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully voting, too. All right. Uh, um, it's my turn next? Yes, it is. Uh, no, actually. I think we just kind of went on a tangent from the one you did about the... Uh, the, the license. Uh, okay. License. So, okay. Yeah, just went on a tangent. Uh, how about this one, Seth? This one is a machine 
He has a machine that guides your hand to teach you how to draw. Cool. Yeah. For all of you who are technologically inclined and yet not artistically inclined, this is where you listen up. Okay. So, uh, this one is from Wired. Mm -hmm. uh, very obvious. This machine guides your hand to teach you how to draw. Uh, good news for people without natural born talent. You don't need it, or at least you won't in the future. Dun, dun, dun. By then, technology will make up for our humanoid shortcomings. Can't play the piano? No problem. A glove will force your fingers to play that passage you can't seem to nail. Need handy, not handy with the pen? That's an easy fix thanks to a robotically controlled accessory that will guide your hand to sketch a perfect circle. This, this is hyperbole, but only slightly, as a new project from designer engineer uh, Sarab Data okay, uh, proves for his, for his thesis project at Copenhagen's Institute of Interaction, of Interaction Design, he created a series of devices that teach people simple tasks like tapping a piano key or drawing basic shapes by using forced haptic feedback. In other words, you don't control Data's machine, they control you. Mm. But stepping back from the story for a second, Greg, you play the piano, I guess? Yes, I do. I play. You, you, you've dabbled in the subject of okay. piano playing. Um, do you feel like a haptic feedback glove would aid in teaching a person piano? It, it's not just uh, listening to it and trying to get your hand to... Uh, recognize the muscle memory, but actually having the glove manipulate your fingers for you. Do you think well, that would be a helpful tool? Yeah, I don't, I don't know necessarily because, it, you know, because the act of playing the piano, let's say it's moving it, doesn't really teach you to play piano. Let's say, let's say it, I, I have a glove that's going to let me play, you know, uh, Beethoven, you know, for at least, for at least, you know, and it, and it allows me to play it. I, I will pretty much guarantee you when I take that glove off and says, okay, now you play it, I'm not going to be able to do it because my brain hasn't learned how to play it. Basically, my fingers were just forced into the motions of playing it, and which play it. but once you take it off, you can't play it anymore. It's not like you've learned it. It's not going to teach you how to play piano. It's just going to allow you to play it as long as you wear the device, and I think that's the case. Even in the artistic thing, you know, it'll you'll it'll allow you to use a, draw a perfect circle, and you can do that. But when you take it off, there's no learning how to do it. The the so when you after you take it off, I don't think you'll you don't won't retain what it was the ability that you had. I think that it's it's not it's more than muscle memory. It, it's 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 memory memory. Well, it, it seems like it would be well. First of all, uh, data's contraptions, they are crude, they're built within a week, they're just proof of concept. That they're not even, uh, he's not even planning on marketing and or making something like this. Mm -hmm. It's just proving that you could. Yeah. And his, his idea is you do it enough times with the robotic assistance, it's your, your hand eventually learns it on its own. So be it a dozen times, be it 50 times, be it 100 times, the robot doesn't care. It's a robot, it'll do it as many times as you want. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like it would help in aiding learning. So you would already be learning the piano on your own. It's not like you sit there, you read a book, and your hand just, you know, goes and does its own thing, and then you wake up one day and you can play the piano like Mozart. I don't think that's the way they're, they're, they're thinking about using it. It's just, if you can't seem to get that one, uh, that, that one piece, that one part, it would help the muscle memory, it would help the muscles. Gosh. Possibly, possibly, yeah, I, I, maybe, I, maybe. Because it definitely can't be like, okay, this hand is going to be over here feeding my mouth Doritos while this hand over here is learning to play the guitar. And you're sitting there watching TV with your hand being robotically controlled. Yeah. That obviously is not going to teach you anything. No, you, have to, you have to obviously focus in on what's going and, and, uh, and concentrate you know, the, the pattern, the techniques, and you might be able to learn that in that manner. Yeah. What if the robotic devices, the, the haptic feedback, aided you when you got it wrong? It would kind of force your hand, or it, it would move your finger slightly so you would strike the right key, or it would buzz when you're wrong. That kind of thing, just to yeah. That 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 would help because then you and it's just it's only muscle memory. 
which is part of it, but your your brain is also learning too, So because it's focusing, it's concentrating on it. So if it forces me to do the passage correctly and I keep doing that and I see the passage eventually, I will probably learn that, yes. But uh, but uh, it, as you say, I'm not eating Doritos and I'm paying it. You have to focus and pay attention what it is that you're doing, and then that would help you in, aid in, in learning. Yeah, so uh, that was the, the, just the story where maybe somewhere down the road, if you needed help learning something, be it drawing, be it piano, be it guitar, be it whatever you you need your hands for, but you just can't seem to get, or you need some assistance, mm -hmm. maybe psychology might come to the rescue and help you learn the arts. There you go. Okay. All right. Uh, I guess we'll just have to wait and see how how it works out. Okay. Uh, uh, this uh, we mentioned this. Uh, a little bit before, but evidently it's a it's official now. It's a Microsoft is sticking a fork in Surface 2 and Windows RT. Okay, um, you know, remember uh, uh, Windows RT was a was a limited version of Windows. It was not a full implementation of it, and it was created because the Surface, which was Microsoft's introductory uh, uh, tablet, didn't have the horsepower nor the hardware to run a full implementation of Windows. And so it was a sort of a stopgap. But now with the Surface 3 and moving forward, uh, all of those tablets now can run a full implementation of Windows. So you really don't need, need Windows RT anymore. So according to the story, the Microsoft Basics is saying, okay, that's it. Um, you know, uh, uh, Microsoft's moved on. The Surface Pro 3 uh, is, is basically a full Windows computer, and so it can run a full version of Windows. It doesn't need a crippled version of Windows like RT is. Uh, and they're no longer manufacturing the Surface 2, um, although they're still uh, available in the uh, Microsoft retail stores. But basically, Windows RT is a dead OS. Okay. Uh, you know, it, it was just waiting. It was a stopgap. They were waiting until they could put out a version of the Surface I could run a full-blown version of Windows. Well, the Surface 3 can do that. You don't need a limited crippled version of, of Windows anymore, and and that's pretty much it. So this basically they're saying uh, it's sort of official as of today. Uh, Paul Lilly writes this that uh, that Surface 2 and then Microsoft RT are are done. I remember when the R when, when Windows RT first came out, we were actually talking with oh. I, it might have been Michael Miller. Someone we were talking with with one of our correspondents about it, and Windows RT. We said it is a watered down beta half baked version of Windows. That is a because it's not a full implementation of Windows, mm -hmm. but it's also a bit too powerful to be just a tablet operating system. Mm -hmm. So it, it was that kind of middleman where they where it was their first attempt at a tablet, but they didn't really have an operating system for it. So, bam, you get Windows RT. And I remember telling our audience back then, I wish I had the clip, don't bother with Windows RT. It's not going to be a full implementation. It's going to get tossed out by the wayside. It is a middleman. Yeah. That's it's early adopter as, as, as clear cut as, as it can be. Yep, exactly. And, 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 and it's true. And it makes perfect sense. I mean, at the time, they didn't have the hardware. Uh, to run a full version of Windows back then, so they made a crippled version. Now they have a, a hardware that can do it, and basically they retire the, the. It was like an interim. It was an interim operating system for an interim uh, piece of hardware, which is no longer made. And yep. uh, now you can run the full version. So that's it, pretty much. And it's official as of today. Uh, uh, good here. Next story. Next story. Next story. Next story. How about about this one. When I say this one, I means I'm still looking for it. Um, if you bought a new graphics card, and when I say new, I mean the best of the best of the new of the best, NVIDIA will help disgruntled GTX 970 owners get a refund, says a driver update is coming. Uh, yeah. Max and PC, Paul Lilly, upcoming driver could improve GTX 970's memory performance. Uh, NVIDIA never really stepped in a pile of PR poo when it was discovered uh, that there were that there were internal communications gaffe over the way 
the G, uh, uh, over the way the G, GeForce GTX 970 handles its four gigabytes of onboard memory and the resulting specs. In short, the GTX 970 has 56 ROPs and one, uh, 1,792 kilobytes of L2 cache instead of matching the GTX 980's 64 ROPs and 2,048 kilobytes of L2 cache as originally advertised. So, however, NVIDIA wants to make things right and has offered to help GTX 970 owners obtain a refund if need be. Should you go that route? In most cases, probably not. Before reading any further, however, we highly recommend familiar, uh, familiarizing yourself with the situation by reading this. They have another article. Don't worry, uh, we won't go anywhere. We'll be right here when we come back. Yada, yada. Uh, so, NVIDIA stated on its forum that it's working on a driver update that will do a better job managing the memory scheme on the GTX 970 and expects to improve performance. Granted, there's only so much that can be done on the on the software side to address a physical design, but given that NVIDIA built the car the way it did, it stands to reason that it also knows how to properly tune it. Uh, if the if you ultimately decide that you want to return the car, however, that's your choice, and, and NVIDIA said it will help you obtain a refund if you're unable to do so on your own. So... Uh -huh. um, so for most, so for most people, what what this boils down to is that your GTX 970 is going to get even faster, courtesy of some forthcoming optimizations. Mm -hmm. And for the few that are truly affected uh, affected by the way the GTX 970 handles memory above 3.5 gigs, you now have someone at Nvidia that's willing to help you obtain a refund. Well, that's good. It's good. It, it it's good because. The GTX 970, right below the 980, which is again, I believe, right below the Titan, and yeah. all like all the graphics cards that, that we just mentioned, all run about eight hundred dollars to about a thousand dollars just for the graphics card, not for the computer around it, just for the one graphics card. So if it's not performing up to your expectations, and you just dropped eight hundred and fifty bucks on this thing, you're going to be miffed. So. Personally, it sounds like there's a problem hardware-wise, and yes, they could put out a driver, they could probably make everything play nicer, uh, what have you, but that doesn't mean that the hardware is any less faulty. It happens sometimes when they put, it, they make so many different products, and something gets looked over, there's a there's a decimal, there's a mixed email, what have you. Mm -hmm. It just sounds like the GTX 970 might just be a slightly defective card. Defective in that the performance will not be as good, but it still runs perfectly fine. Yeah. Exactly. It's just if you're dropping 850 bucks, you should probably get the card you, you want to pay for. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, because they know about this, undoubtedly they're not going to keep producing um, they're not going to keep producing malfunctioning cards. Yeah. I have no doubt that NVIDIA will indeed have this worked out by the next generation of yeah. GTX 970s. Exactly, exactly. Uh, it's nice to see that the company supports its product. Really. Oh, yeah. Uh, NVIDIA, top-notch. They, they, they do great things. I've been an, an NVIDIA uh, graphics card user for the longest time. They make good stuff. Yeah, they do. Very good. Very good stuff. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, what kind of graphics card do you have, by the way? I have I have an older one. My computer has not been opened up and worked on lately, so I have a GTX uh, 560i X or something like that. With the Nvidia, you have an Nvidia card. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it it's like a 560, which was their top. It was yeah somewhere between middle and top of the line back then, mm -hmm. but uh, this was like a year before the Titan came out. And then the Titan came out, and I was like, oh my gosh, that thing is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So here I am sitting with a 560, waiting to get something much bigger, much better. Yeah, and you'll be able to drop it into the computer that you have because uh, you know it's not necessarily the pro processor power. Uh, when it comes to graphics, obviously the graphics card is can be a bottleneck, and so uh, you want to... <sighs> See, yeah. I... I just feel like if you're spending a thousand dollars on on a graphics card, you should probably build a computer that goes. It, you're not. You don't just want to drop it into your old four hundred dollar computer. You want to build a computer around it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, what's Cause, it? Because if you drop a thousand dollar graphics card in, but you only have uh, a a semi reliable motherboard and 
four gigs of RAM in your computer, congratulations, your graphics card is no longer a, a bottleneck, but your RAM is, your motherboard is, your hard drive is, everything is. Well, you can you can update all those things though. Uh, they're all gradable, right? Especially yeah, exactly. So, so if you buy an expensive graphic card, build a computer around it. Build no. it a proper shrine. Okay. <laughs> Worship it as you as you should. Yes, uh, and and uh, and you'll be, you'll be happy that you did, right? That you did. It. Okay. Uh, we don't have time to do another story, uh, but we do have uh, Dick DiBartolo uh, waiting in the wings. He's going to be joining us again. He is the Giz Wiz. Uh, Mad Magazine's Maddest Writer. So let me just take the opportunity to tell you about our Computer America contests. They're in full swing right now. Head over to our website and uh, just uh, go to our Interact menu and the, the second item says Enter Contests and you'll see all of them there. Our Logitech contest is up and running. Uh, we have our third place prize which is the Logitech HD Webcam C310. The second place prize is the Logitech G400S Optical Gaming Mouse valued at $60. Oh, the, the webcam is about the $50, and the grand prize is the Logitech X300 mobile wireless stereo speaker valued at $70. Uh, the contest will end February the uh, 27th uh, at midnight Eastern Time, and then over the weekend we'll draw three winning names, and Monday, the March the 2nd, we'll announce the three big winners. Uh, the registration form is on the very same page. You, know, you don't have to send emails anymore. Just fill out the form, click the Submit button, and you're registered. It's just that simple. And while you're there, uh, you know, enter in our subscribe to our weekly email newsletter, the Show Reminder. Okay, it's the only publication in the universe uh, that will tell you who's going to be on the Computer America Show for the entire week. It's delivered every morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, and we have redesigned the newsletter. It's beautiful now, thanks to Carissa Green, our our booking goddess. She did a marvelous job on that uh, on that uh, Show Reminder. Um, and if you're not sure whether you're registered, just go ahead and put your email address in there and click the subscribe button. And if you're already in it, you, you know, it'll tell you and you don't have to subscribe. But if not, make sure that you have your email, your first and last name in there. And then uh, uh, you're also, when you do that, it'll send you a confirmation email to which you must respond and then uh, you're in. We just make sure that you're not a robot and that you're a live person and want the email, and want the uh, show reminder. And also every Friday from that list of names, we draw a winning name for the Logitech T650 rechargeable glass touchpad. That's right, glass touchpad. It's made out of glass. It's gorgeous. Uh, we give that's valued at eighty dollars. We give away one of those every single Friday. All right, you're listening to the Computer America Show on the uh, Blog Talk Radio Network, on the Boost Radio Network, on the IRN Radio Network. Dick D. Bartolo, the Giz Whiz, Mad Magazine's maddest writer, is here with us. Uh, we'll continue on in hour two of the Computer America Show. We're coming right back. Stay with us. Broadcasting live, it's the only national radio talk show on computers to air every weeknight, Computer America, hosted by national columnist Craig Crossman. The first hour's behind us, but there's still more of tech news, tech talk, and your phone calls. We're being beamed nationwide at ComputerAmerica.com. You got computer problems? Bring them on. You're listening to Computer America. Computers run the world, and we run computers. Call us or send us an email to live at ComputerAmerica.com. Hello and welcome into Hour 2 of the nation's longest-running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers. This is the Computer America Show, and I'm your host, Craig Crossman. And I'm your co-host, Ben. <laughs> and uh, uh, if, yes. you're, if you're just joining us, uh, we are uh, we've just uh, did Computer and Technology News, Whoa. brought to you by Slimware Utilities the official optimization software of Computer America. And uh, we're going to uh, uh, be joined by Dick DiBartolo. He's the giz whiz. And, uh, uh, and uh, normally he's here right now, but uh, <laughs> uh, he hasn't shown up yet. So, uh, uh, no. Oh, no, no, no. He says, no, no. Oh, he says that he's in the wrong place. He says, the screen says waiting for people to join this call. No, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Uh, He's normally here on time, but unfortunately, uh, the internet is such a vast, large place. He, uh, I guess, he took a wrong turn. So hopefully, yeah. he'll be in here in just a moment. Yeah, I'm going to send this to him again. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, I'll go back here. Make sure you send the proper room and not the destruction codes for the nukes we have. So that'd be <laughs> great. I, I am. I'm not sure what's going on. 
that's that's the that's the correct one. I'm sending to him again, but uh, that's that's the uh, that's yeah. the, the code for going in. So I'm not sure why he's having some problems. Um, uh, hmm, this is strange. Um, <clears throat> I guess worst case scenario, we'll have him call in, but uh, we'll give him a, another chance or two. Yeah. To... Well, well, why don't we we, we continue doing uh, the computer? Yeah, technology. we actually have like two or more news stories waiting in the wings. We'll, we'll, we'll read one of them. Why don't see, you do that? See, why? Yeah, see if he, he can make it in here while we finish up this uh, this last story. And uh, you go ahead and do that. I'm going to try to figure out what 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 what, what the problem is and why he get. Oh, no, oh, here he is. He's coming in. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, I th <clears throat> the first link you sent me must have been wrong. No, I can't say it was right. It's, it's Craig, that. wrong? What? That happens only because every I just day. I just clicked the second link you sent and I went right here. All right. Well, there it is. Well, uh, that is, of course, is the voice of a uh, Dicky Bartolo, the Giz Wiz, and Mad Magazine's maddest writer, and. Uh, Dick is here uh, to talk about all the great gadgets and things that he finds on the internet. He's here every last Wednesday madness of the month. So, Dick, welcome to Computer America. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, we're doing great. And uh, if people want to follow along, they can go to our show notes page at ComputerAmerica.com. We actually have a link to all the things that we're going to be uh, talking about uh, on the uh, program tonight. And, you know, uh, I forget where you guys are. So you are not anywhere in the snow belt, right? Well, yeah, well, I, I was, I was, but I left. I'm now in. We're both in Florida now. Oh, okay. <laughs> how, how are you? You're in the New York area, right? You got clobbered, didn't you? You know what? Fortunately, it it veered off a little, so we only got eight inches, but uh, the end of Long Island got two feet, and Boston, I Boston, think, got two and a half feet. Man, yeah, I heard Boston really got it bad. Yeah, but since they were predicting it to be the worst storm in New York City history. It was bizarre. They closed everything at 11 o'clock Monday night. The first time in 110 years, they closed the subways. And it was all for nothing. It was all for nothing. So people were, a lot of businesses were very upset because they had to close because there was no way Broadway shows closed. Ah. Um, so you know, I, 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 get that they're, I get that they're miffed, but at the same time, yeah. It's it's nice that even in such a large city like New York City can come to a halt to protect people. That's yeah, nice. No, no I, I think you're absolutely right. You know, uh, had it gone the other way and gone the way they want, it would have been the right thing to do. So uh, there's no way to really predict how how the storm's going to veer at the last minute. Yeah, I I, I listened to some of the weather uh, 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 meteorologists and they were sort of apologizing. They said, "Well, they said, well, that's not an exact science, you know. We don't have it." <laughs> no, I, I heard that time and time again. <laughs> I know. I, I I think they were apologizing, especially because the uh, New York City was it was so dire. I mean, Sunday night, I think it was a Monday morning, and May come on, this is going to be the worst uh, storm in New York City history, and I'm thinking. Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! I mean, the man. I went down and I took my drop cam. The, the the problem with my boat is having too much snow on the back of the boat. So I I took my drop cam, repositioned it so I could see my back deck from my apartment, and that way I could keep track of how much snow was piling up there. Yeah. Uh, of course, the first thing that happened was the wind drew uh, 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 drove snow against the windshield in the back, so I couldn't see. But uh, when the the snow finally blew off, I thought, wait a minute, I don't have to rush down there. There's eight inches of snow in my boat. <laughs> but anyway, so technology is really great. Yeah, yeah I guess the mayor must have been miffed because the mayor he was going out and doing all the stuff, and then he had egg on his face. I mean, yeah, um, a little bit, a little bit. But but like it? Ben said, a lot, mo a lot of people were PO'd, but then a lot of P you know more people said better this, yeah, than yeah, it a, really hit bad and. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, What's the, uh, the the phrase that 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 a meteorologist uses? It's, it's science. Better, si science is more of an art than a science. Yeah. Science is more of an art than a science. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, it, well, it, I, I think the uh, phrase they use is "we screwed up." <laughs> <laughs> I like that one better. <laughs> and trust me, we, we live in Florida. We have had numerous hurricanes, numerous tropical storms veer off at the last at, at the last second, turn around 180, 360, uh, jump, you know, uh, kickflip. They they do crazy. Weather systems do crazy things. So yeah, no, absolutely. I'm glad here that you didn't get hit with the worst of it. Yes. No, no, I, it was 
perfect because I only had to shovel a little bit of snow, and had it been two and a half feet, it would have been a drag. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, again, uh, we're going to talk about some of the things that uh, Dick finds for us. Now, again, you can go to gizwiz.biz and uh, just click on the banner that says Non-Paid Lackey Fun on Computer America, and it'll take you to the special page that Dick has set up for us here at Computer America, so you can kind of follow along all the different things uh, that he finds for us uh, on the Internet. And the very first thing uh, we're going to talk about is a very different kind of exercise bands because there are a lot of them out. I mean, there's the Fitbit, there's this, you know, there are a whole bunch there of them. There are a lot. And, and and I told it when this guy, I was walking around, it was a Pepcom event, and, and uh, he said, you want to see a great uh, exercise band? And I said, sir, unless this does something really unique, no. <laughs> I said, there must be 30 <laughs> of them on the market. And he said, he said, you will be impressed, and, and he was right. So uh, this exercise band is called the Talk Band B1, and he shows it me on it his wrist, and he runs through it, shows your calories and how, much, how, many, how far you walk, how many hours you slept. But then he said, so now your phone rings, you push this button, and the display where I just saw the... Uh, the pedometer and the, and the sleep mode, mm -hmm. suddenly the, a name scrolls across it and a phone number and you push on the side of the band and that whole display pops out of the band and it is a Bluetooth headset. Yeah. So you plug it in your ear, you do your call and then when you're done you just put it back in the band and it goes back to being an exercise band. So it was very clever. Wow. Or a real two-in-one device. So it's Bluetooth 4.1 and NFC? Uh, I, uh, I, I believe it is NFC yeah. also. Yeah. For easy. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And it's an OLED display, so it was very clever. Very but does, clever. does the display stay lit? As you're wearing it, um, you know, I think as you move your arm, it comes on like like many of them do to save okay. battery power. Okay. But that's okay. Yeah. And what does it cost? Uh, uh, it was one. It's uh, one hundred and thirty dollars. Okay, and it can. They say it can run up to seven days on a single charge. On a single charge. That's pretty good. Yeah, well, it's, it's pretty neat. I, I I don't own it and I didn't use it, but uh, I mean, I, I just had that demo and I thought. Yeah. This, is, this is very clever. This is a very clever two-in-one device. Finally, uh, something a little different. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, this this one, I, I love the teaser, and I use the teaser in, in our, our show notes and everything. I said, this is a device that's going to allow you to answer your front door, but not only answer it, you can answer your front door from anywhere. You can be in a different state or different, even a different country. Yeah, I, I like this too. And, and so basically when the doorbell rings, your phone rings. You hear a chime on your phone. Uh. And the camera goes on back at your front door and you can see who's standing there and you can talk through the speaker in the uh, ring video doorbell. And I mean, you can be a thousand miles away and say, you know, I just got out of the shower. <laughs> Can you just leave it in, uh, on the doorstep? Or in, in the case, if you live in a building, you can say, you know, I, I can't come to the door right away. Could you ring 2R and give it to my neighbor? Yeah. And the person at the other end will have no idea if you were there or not. And also <laughs> you can uh, turn it on if you want just to look around the front yard uh, as a security device. I think this is a very cool idea. Yeah, it's very clever, and it's called Just Ring. And I said to the guy, I asked him what his website was, and he said ring.com. I said, how did you ever get ring.com? And he said, I paid a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was, it's very clever. Ring.com. It's got a built-in motion sensor. Uh, a motion sensors, uh, yes, that's so. That, that's another uh, security device. You can set it for the way you want. And also, I, I said to him, you know, suppose you have a, a door, uh, another door right next door. When yeah. people walk up to that door, and he showed me that when you're setting it up, 
there's a, a 360 grid marked off in sections and you can tell the ring video doorbell ignore these sections so in other words you can tell the video doorbell just to be looking from center line all the way to the right not to look to the left right uh, so, so you can yeah, actually, uh, make it so that a known thing that keeps happening will not set off the security. Right. Or, if, or if the doorbell is in a hallway or something, and people walk by the hallway all the time, you can probably you know figure out a way to to do that. I mean, that, it's really, really cool. Now, bat does it run off batteries or do you? It runs on batteries, and I for some bizarre reason, I think he told me that the battery built in would go for a year. I'm hoping I got that right. But whatever it was, it was very, very long. Now, if you already have a wired doorbell, there is wiring in there where you can have it both ring your doorbell and uh, ring your phone so that you can then just you can take your do doorbell off the, the front door. Yeah, because, because that would make sense because if you do... If you have a wiring for a doorbell, then you have power because other because uh, if it's a it's video, right? I mean, you can see it's who, video. Yeah, so, so obviously that's a, that's an enormous drain. So I can't see a battery lasting for a year uh, doing. You no, know, I may have that wrong. Maybe it was to to uh, once a month charge it for an hour. I I I, yeah. I, I did but, forget it. These are these are things that I saw at shows and <laughs> didn't yeah, exactly. have it. Uh, here in the house, where I can, you know, play with it and find out all those things. Well, ben, ben, I'm sure if you go to the website, you'll find. Yeah, ben, got to ring.com and find out how it works. Yeah. Let me do this. Ben, once check it and see what we get. On it seems you press the button and it rings. Yeah. So yeah, crazy. All right. Well, then uh, continuing on in the same <laughs> spirit, in the same spirit, uh, being away from your home and still having some semblance of control. This is very cool. Um, especially if you have pets. This is a device that allows you to play with your pet at home even if you're halfway around the world. Yeah, this was really neat. <clears throat> it's called PetCube. It just started shipping uh, a month ago, and they were showing it at CES. So you mount this very low down. It's a 4x4x4 four by four by four inch cube with a video camera so that you can see your pets. But there is one of those little red laser dots in there. Mm -hmm. and you run your finger over your phone, and you are moving that laser dot around the floor <laughs> of your apartment. So when the guy brought it up, there were, I think, four cats, and they were playing with this. And I said, is this your home? And he said, no, this is a pet shelter. Yeah. And he said, what's great about this is the pet shelter said that they had two other cats which got adopted because people were playing with them and they loved the way the cats were running around the, the room and the way the cats were playing and reacted to this. Hmm. And so they went to the shelter and adopted uh, these cats. Well, so <laughs> you, yeah, so it's it's very clever. So you can use it in your own home. Also, the other thing is, the 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 pet the pet shelter doesn't have to worry that about the cats being bored because on their website they can post a pet cube URL, and when you're sitting around and you want to have you know interact with a pet, you can go to the pet shelter and and play with the laser. And I said, well, you know, that's good because if you're going to have a very long day, you could just email 10 of your friends <laughs> and say, you know, my, my dog Fairway is going to be alone all day. Do you mind tuning in? And, and you can talk to her. It's, it's, there's a two-way mic in there. Uh, and do you mind uh, using the laser pointer and uh, giving a little exercise? That is very cool. Yeah. I, I like the fact that it's not that, that uh, an animal shelter in order to promote, you know, uh, so they can, uh, you, you can get attached, to, you can play with the, with the cat or the dog remotely from wherever you are. Yes, yeah, I think it's great. Yeah. I think it's great too. I was, I, that, that was, really <laughs> sold me on the idea. And what happens to something like this cost? Uh, it's $199. All right, 200 bucks. Yeah. Seems like, uh, yeah, uh, uh, 
and yes, uh, 199 includes shipping uh, according to uh, the site. But uh, it seems like a really cool feature that if you run, because I, I know a lot of people who do, who run pet daycares and things like that, if they could set these pet cubes up, it would just be an added feature and would. Uh, if I'm traveling and I get to see and my do my dog gets to see me and I get to see my dog, that's a huge perk. So that's really cool device. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely, very, very cool. Yes, when you you find this really, really neat stuff, you got a lot of interesting things tonight. Um, Dick D. Bartolo here with us uh, for the uh, remainder of the hour, and we're talking about all the fun stuff that he has at gizwiz.biz. You can check it out and go just click the non-paid lackey button on Computer America and you can see all the things that we're talking about here on the program. And hopefully you're watching us on a live computer or video stream and uh, you can see Dick there and uh, wave to everybody, Dick. <laughs> yay, yay, yay. Exactly. So let's continue on. Um, uh, this next item is, uh, uh, you say, you've heard of a kangaroo, but how about a mamaroo? <laughs> uh, uh, my, this, this, this was kind of neat. This is a motorized device to let your baby fall asleep. So there are five settings for, and, and what they did is they they had women carry babies or hold their babies or rock their babies the way that they do that made the baby fall asleep. And while they were doing that, they were also wired to a computer mm -hmm. so that the computer would register their movements. Yeah. And then they came up with this seat that you put the baby in, and it can be a rocking motion. It can be car ride. Mm -hmm. It can be tree swing. And it's a way that for the, for the baby to fall asleep. So control is Bluetooth, so you can control it. Uh, with your Bluetooth phone. It also has built-in nature sounds. You can also connect it to an MP3 player if your baby has a favorite kind of music. And so it, it's a way to put the baby to sleep without you having to physically sit there and, and hold the baby. Um, the baby actually, it's a little seat. And the baby it's a little seat, exactly. It's so a like, you have to strap the baby in like in a car seat. Yes, that's exactly right, and it's uh, a 25 pound weight limit, so I, they would not let me in it <laughs> <laughs> to test it out. It looks really. Cool. I'm watching it. It's very hypnotic. You know? Yeah, it is. No, absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know what I think? It, it, it's it, it's expensive. I think it's 240 dollars, uh -huh. but I think it's just a kind of thing that a a place could rent because they say it's really from uh, birth till about six months or so. Really? Until they start to sit up unassisted. So if you have a family who has lots of kids, the thing would be to buy it with the first kid. Just keep passing it on and <laughs> on and on. But I would think it would almost be a, a great thing to rent because – you know, you don't want to two hundred forty dollars. What what is that like sixty dollars a month or something? But I mean, it could be worth it for the time saving and and or you can, the kid oh, the kid would enjoy it or sell it on eBay. You know, I guess. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Child not included. Child not included. That's right. <laughs> if you find a child in it, please return to me. Yes, that. that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Oh, send, please send the child back. Okay. All right, uh, Dick D. Bartolo continues on, and we're finding these great things now. This next one, you say, have a th if you have a thin laptop, but you if you have a fat power brick, that's the device you know, that gives you the power. Uh, but a fat power brick that you can carry for power. Yeah, this is this is pretty neat. This is a Zolt. It's like Volt with a Z, Zolt, Z O L T. And so this little guy is just three inches long and an inch and a third in diameter, and it has an AC plug. And the AC plug folds up when you throw it in your backpack. And, and so what's unique about this is you pop the plug down plug it into an AC uh, receptacle, and then it comes with a USB cable, 
and then I think it's seven different laptop connectors. So this becomes the power supply for your laptop. So it's a yeah. tiny little power supply. But it has three USB ports on the side. So one of the three is used to power your laptop. And I believe it was most laptops, the guy said up to 90% of current laptops, uh, up to, it puts out 70 watts to, to uh, run the laptop. Then the other two are there where you can use your USB charger to be charging your phone or, 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 and maybe running your tablet uh -huh. all at the same time. So for road warriors, this is a neat gadget that'll save you from carrying a big brick for your computer and another device to charge your phone and your tablet where you can do all these with this one device. It comes, you get the device, you get the six foot uh, charging cable and I just saw it now. You get seven interchangeable PC tips and a little travel pouch and pre-order is uh, 80 bucks and when it ships in the spring It'll, in theory, go to its suggested retail of uh, hundred ninety nine ninety nine. But I thought it was clever. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it is. I think it looks really good. And I like the colors that they come in, too. Yeah, it comes in three different colors. And and if you go to uh, goalzult.com, uh, they list every laptop that it can power. So you should check that out before you buy it. Seems seems much friendlier if you're one of those airport junkies who the, the, those those special outlets that everyone is crowded around just to charge their devices instead of hogging the whole thing to yourself. You can hey yeah yeah three yes yes, yes yes very very nice. yeah. anything to cut the cord you know the power cut the cord exactly. <laughs> Exactly. All right. Uh, let's continue on. Now, now, we always, when you go to the doctor, they say, well, the doctor will see you now. Well, now it's going to be the doctor and his robot will see you now. Yeah, this is, I, I thought this was also very clever. And I think that they have a long way to go. But the fact that they've even started doing it, the company's called RX Robots. And they've dubbed the robot the 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 uh, Medi M E D I like for medical, but the the thought here is to have this robot. And if you remember, Wowie used to have a very tall robot, maybe not super tall, but maybe two and a half feet tall, and he was called uh, Robo Sapien. Wow, and, yes. You know, he could pick up cans of soda and walk across the floor and stuff. I so, I think we got we got Ben a, we got Ben a Robo Sapien for holidays years ago. Didn't we get you a Robo Sapien? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You taught you taught the Robo Sapien to rock Ben to sleep. I mean that was like <laughs> the original uh, Mama Robo or whatever it was. <sighs> Robo Sapien. That was a tragic story. We were walking. <laughs> We were walking through the grocery store, and I looked up at that thing, and I said, "Look at that thing! That is ridiculous. And I would his, never want something like that." And his mother thought that he said he wanted a robot. Oh, how funny! So I so I got on Christmas Day, and I put on the biggest <laughs> grin I could, and said, "Thank you. It's just what I wanted." Oh. Your, your mother bought you this robot. She just, it was expensive, and it was yes, it was uh. Expensive robot, and almost two hundred bucks or something. Yeah, right? and 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 we brought it out, and it, and it was Christmas morning, and uh, I was there, and 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 we expected big, you know, gr grins uh, and happy. <laughs> and then you could see uh, we said, "What's what's wrong?" You know, it's, I, I, you know. Uh, Thank I was, you. Uh, it, what else can you say at that point? But yeah. 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 Exactly. But you know, well, we tried. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's good. Well, anyway, so the object here is that uh, the, the team who came up with RX Robots, uh, they, they did some analysis w with kids and, and just using a robotic arm. And a robotic arm was picking cards off a table and the robotic arm would sometimes drop the card and the kids would, would talk to the arm like, no, oh, don't give up, try picking up the arm again, uh, picking up the card again. And... <laughs> And they were thinking that the kids like reacting with with just the arm, so yeah. they they thought, how about a robot that would talk to kids? Mm -hmm. 
and so the object here is the the robot would be programmed to talk to the kid about what the kid was going in for. Mm -hmm. And if the kid is going in to get shots, the you know the robot might say, "Oh, I got my shot this morning. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna sit here and and be here while you get your shot." And your arm's gonna feel cold because they're gonna put something on your arm. Uh, anyway, I think it's a great idea that there could be some, this robot could be in the room all the time with the child so that the child feels that there's someone there that, and the robot introduces themselves when the child comes in. As I said, this is really in, it, in its infancy, but I, I see it as a, an, a very interesting way to uh, help kids. And well, I think they said the one, ho the, the one hospital that's using it uh, kids getting um, injections and, and vaccines and stuff is up 20% because they want to interact with the robot. You know, this has come a long way because when I was a kid, um, uh, <laughs> uh, and my father told me this story because I, I was a little too young to remember it, but uh, he brought me the doctor. I was afraid of the shot. And uh, so, the doctor, so the doctor stepped on my foot. <laughs> and I was looking at him stepping on my foot, and I was so engrossed in stepping in stepping on my foot, I didn't realize that he gave me the oh, shot. How funny! <laughs> well, that's odd manner. Yeah. Oh, that's very funny. So he does it to every kid. Every kid he stepped on his foot. So every every kid you're seeing coming out of the doctor's office <laughs> going, "Oh my foot, my foot!" You go, "Oh, you got your shot." Shot exactly. That's very funny. And and it worked. Evidently, the doctor found this me method, and, and and I was one of them. And and I, I totally didn't realize I didn't get the shot. I forgot. No, that's very funny. Notice also, I, he drums up a lot of business for the local podiatrist. And he's a pe he was a pediatrician, you know, and and and, and he came up with this. Well, he knew how to work the kids, so it worked out. <laughs> uh, the Very weird thing w w with many, though, is I get that it works and children seem to like them. It's, it's just funny that the one aspect that I think a lot of people are trying to cling to with uh, against robots is you lose that human interaction. And here we have a robot that is actually helping humans interact better in a troubling situation. So you, you're like kind of uh, automating the bedside manner. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and because sometimes I think a kid might think the robot's going to be more truthful than <laughs> the nurse or the doctor. You know, they're there to make sure you get the shot. And the robot, you know, the robot's the robot on your side. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's a good idea, too. And like I said, yeah. you know, down the line, I, I think they'll probably, the robots will probably help do things. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, at one point, the robots are probably going to give the shots. Or, or maybe the robot will just step on the kid's foot. Yes. Hey, listen, we're at the bottom of the hour here. <laughs> Bartolo is here with us. And uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about the Lenovo AnyPen technology. This is Computer America. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Looking for a best friend? Brother Wolf Animal Rescue has your best friend waiting just for you. Their mission is to protect and enhance the lives of companion animals and the people who love them. Their no-kill rescue shelter is open year-round, making it easy for people to adopt their best new friend. This year, Brother Wolf will find homes for over 2,400 orphaned dogs, puppies, cats, and kittens. All have ended up as an orphan through no fault of their own. Brother Wolf has created a safe, nurturing environment where these special animals can heal emotionally and physically until they find a lifelong home. Their life-saving transport program brings dogs and puppies from overcrowded shelters in the south to rescues in the north where homes are easier to find. Brother Wolf Animal Rescue is a 501c3 organization. To learn more about their life-saving work and to make a donation, visit their website at www.bwar.org. That's www.bwar.org. Help to realize Brother Wolf's vision when no animal is euthanized for lack of a home. Who's a good boy? Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-866-663-MYTV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. 
So, disable the cable and get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-866-663-MYTV right now to sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and up to four rooms. And there's no equipment to buy. That includes your free HD TV upgrade, your free DVR upgrade, and your free professional installation. And the best part, the pristine digital picture and sound. Call 1-866-663-MYTV. So, what are you waiting for? Pull out your major credit or debit card. Call 1-866-663-MYTV. 1-866-663-MYTV. Disable the cable, cut costs, and get more. Call 1-866-663-MYTV. 1-866-663-MYTV. You're just in time. This is Marty Winston with a news tips bulletin review for Computer America. This time, the GE Jasco Wireless Home Camera Monitor. Now, the GE Jasco 2.4 gigahertz wireless color digital home monitoring kit allows one-way color video and two-way audio communication between a small and nimble camera and a three and a half inch LCD monitor. The color camera can plug in through a wall ward or use four AA cells for power. It includes a motion detector, a temperature sensor, a mic, a speaker, and night vision to 20 feet in black and white. The monitor has a docking easel stand that keeps its battery charged, displays the camera video plus date, time, and temperature, allows talk back to the camera, remotely turns the camera's night light on or off, and can even play stored lullaby tunes through the camera's speaker. The camera can also manually or automatically record to a micro SD card, which is not included, and it records that at the monitor. For working at home, it's a way to keep an eye on the infants. At home or in the office, it's a way to keep an eye on the doorstep or lobby or for incoming deliveries. Bottom line, the GE Jasco Wireless Home Camera Monitor extends your hearing and vision to useful places in useful ways. This is Marty Winston with a News Tips Bulletin Review for Computer America. Welcome back to the Computer America Show. Uh, 33 minutes past the hour, Dick DiBartolo continues on with us to uh, wrap up the hour. Uh, we don't have anything to give away today, so no contest, though we do have contests running, just not yeah. giving away anything tonight. Uh, we are doing all, all these great products that, uh, that the Dick has actually found, and... Uh, we're kind of bouncing back and forth between the Medi and Craig's shattered childhood, uh, <laughs> what have you. But uh, the next one on the list, uh, unless either one of you has something else to say about the Medi, is uh, Lenovo's AnyPen. Well, I can talk more about my shattered childhood, but I don't think Oh, I'll... no, no, no. <laughs> Put us to sleep, Craig. Put us to sleep. But no, uh, let's talk about uh, Lenovo for a second. Uh, you know, the, the AnyPen technology is, is kind of fun. Um, and the theory here is this is a little yoga tablet too. It's an 8-inch uh, full HD IPS display, Windows 8.1. And the theory here is that Windows 8.1 on an 8-inch tablet is great if you're young and have great eyesight, but you may want to use um, a stylus if you're older and you're drilling down into a lot of menus where the type is getting smaller and mm -hmm. smaller. And so they've come up with something called AnyPen technology where if you have a fat finger, you can just pick up a pencil and use that as a stylus. You can pick up a fork and use one tine of the fork. They, they, had, they had a bunch of stuff just laying on, on the display table. Well, uh, so I used a spork as a stylus and, and opened different windows. I used the end of a pencil. I used the end of a pen. I used uh, uh, a push pin. You can use just about anything metal or graphite. Well, and it's a... People don't realize that these screens, these touch sensitive screens, actually uh, either use capacitance or something. And when you try to use a, uh, a something that's not your finger, that it's not going to work. I mean, uh, that's very true on smartphones. Uh, so they've actually modified that technology to work with anything uh, that, which is int very interesting. And, and this is it has uh, speakers, dual cameras, weighs under a pound. And less than 300 bucks. Uh, 15 hours of battery life. 
uh, it's really neat, and it, which it should be out momentarily. They said by the end of January. So that's the Yoga Tablet to uh, the eight inch. Only the eight inch one has the uh, AnyPen technology. It has it has a uh, front and rear facing cameras. Camera, yeah, dual speakers, built in stand, hanger, tilt control handle, and it's all under a pound, and also less than three hundred bucks, which is amaz amazing. So uh, uh, yeah, but I like the idea. I, I like the idea that you can use anything. Uh, as uh, to touch the, the the screen, it doesn't have to have capacitance because if you use a plastic spork, it has no capacitance, and, and most screens would just ignore that. Uh, so they're obviously using a, a, a different technology and and not charging you for it too. It's very yeah, well, uh, charging you a little bit because the the previous ver I don't know if it's the previous version or or they have two versions on the market. But without that technology, it's two seventy nine. Okay. And with that technology, it's two ninety nine. But I mean, for twenty bucks. That's clear. Yeah. What are you kidding? That's that's a no. a no brainer to pick up the one with the uh, any uh, any pen technology is the way yeah. to go. Abs I agree with you. Yeah. Now they also un unveiled something called the Levy Z. You know what? It was a preview, preview, and everybody that I saw them do this to had the same reaction. They said, "Oh, Dick, if you want to see something new, here, try this." And they hand you what you think is a is a notebook until you hold it, and then you go. So the, what is this the case for the for the uh, notebook? And they go, "No, <coughs> excuse me, that is the notebook." Wow, and and the slogan is lighter than air because it weighs a pound less than the uh, MacBook Air. Wow, it's the lightest 13-inch laptop. It weighs 1.72 pounds, and and they say if you want to know what that is, it's the weight of two cans of soda. Yeah. Uh, they're not coming till May, but they're worth looking for it, it, it's spelled L A capital V I E Z so it's the La V Z and it's going to be two different models one is a convertible so uh, that's going to come in at, at about two pounds they have 128 gigabyte solid state drives wow. they are they are so lightweight they are they're just really beautiful you know, looking. I love that ca the, way the the marketing person came up with the expression "lighter than air" because it's a double meaning. Isn't that clever? Yes, that is very clever. Not you know, it's not like putting your nose in it. But it's just, <laughs> and at first, I didn't get. I just said "lighter than air," and I'm thinking, "Oh, that's nice." And the guy said, "Yeah, a pound lighter than the uh, uh, Mac Air." And I said, "Oh, so Mac now I get your slogan. It's even better than I thought." Yeah, very. It's very clever. It's yeah. very clever. Exactly. Very clever. So two really cool things are coming from Lenovo. Uh, yes, exactly, exactly. The one of them right away, and uh, the uh, La Vie uh, coming uh, in May. Okay. So I have a question for all you people out there who uh, use Bluetooth headsets, uh, and my question to you is. Where do you put it when you're not using it? And Dick's got a, a really good place. Yes, you know, it's also interesting, and I didn't realize it until I saw this device. I don't see lots of people anymore running around town with their Bluetooth uh, headset in their ear. It used to be that everybody on the train, it was like a sea of blinking blue lights. It's like, <laughs> whoa, look at me. Hey, I got a wireless headset. Yeah, um, you, know, you don't see that anymore. No, what happened? And so Blue Bed, the Blue Bed holster is kind of clever uh, at a reasonable price. It's basically it has a little belt clip on it, or you can clip it on to a backpack, clip it on to a pocket, and basically it's just a place to park your wireless Bluetooth headset when you're not moving it. Hmm. It's under twenty bucks. It comes with three different little inserts for the three big manufacturers of wireless headsets so it locks in place. Uh, it comes with three different color covers so if you want it to match something you can do that and as I said it's under twenty dollars. It's called the Blue Bed Bluetooth uh, holster and, and they spell blue B-L-U uh, B-E-D Blue Bed. Well, you know, it makes sense because, you know, if, where are you going to put it normally? You put it in your pocket? Or yeah, or your backpack, and then your phone rings, and then you, you 
digging through to 97 other thousand things you have in your backpack. <laughs> right. Uh, so this is a convenient way to park it and park yeah. it and, and, and find it quickly. Very good. And again, under 20 bucks. Under Thank 20 you. bucks, yeah. And uh, and and it's uh, it's interesting. That they yeah. that. Okay. So now um, we're moving from your ears to your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Bluetooth toothbrush. Not if you have blue teeth, but uh, <laughs> if you want a connected uh, Bluetooth toothbrush. So the Oral B Pro 5000. It it does a lot of stuff. You you pair it with your phone. If you're if you want your kids to brush, you know you're supposed to brush for two minutes mm -hmm. and thirty seconds each quadrant. I have an Oral B now that comes with its own little uh, display. And I think I think uh, Craig, we talked about this before. I think you have this, and it's like a face. And each time you do a quadrant, it it lights yeah. up. And then when when all four quadrant lights up, it makes a Sonic happy game. face. Yeah. Yeah, Sonic but, yeah. Yeah. So basically, now your Bluetooth phone becomes a display. <laughs> but if if you're easily bored during those two minutes, it can go out and get today's headlines. Yeah. It can get the weather, it can play a cartoon for a kid, it remembers your past 20 brushing sessions. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but they're saying that dentists would like to look at how you brushed your teeth uh, mm -hmm. over a period of time so you could, they could uh, scan through and say, oh, you know, you always, no wonder your front teeth are falling out. You, you, you <laughs> <laughs> you keep missing that quadrant, yeah, um, exactly. and it'll tell you, do you want to brush your gums? Do you want to go into a deep clean? Uh, anyway, if you like gadgets and you like things to be, uh, you know, do every conceivable thing for your teeth, you can look for the Oral-B Pro 5000 Smart Series. I and uh, 121 on Amazon. I would only buy this just for the fact that I could say I now have a Bluetooth toothbrush. Toothbrush. Yeah, well, that that in itself is pretty good. <laughs> that's, that's exactly. I have a Bluetooth toothbrush. Yes, Seems exactly. like the kind of people who puts uh, internet connected devices inside crock pots or, or, or slow cookers. <laughs> It, it, it's, the, it's the same kind of thing where, yeah, sure, probably didn't need to be connected to the internet or Bluetooth, but we said why not instead of why. Yeah, yeah the, no, absolutely, absolutely. The absolutely. Internet of Things is just reaching into your toothbrush now and, and into your mouth. Into your mouth. Yeah, into your mouth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so uh, again, Dick D. Bartolo joining us for the minute of the hour. We're, we're fun again, it's uh, you can see all these things at uh, at gizwiz.biz. Just click on the computer uh, non-paid lackey fun banner at computeramerica.com, or just go to our show notes page at computeramerica. .com. We have a direct link to everything we're talking about tonight. Uh, the Satechi media button puts control of your smart device audio video at your fingertips. This looks really neat. Th this is very clever. So basically it's so that you can turn your music on and off, uh, uh, move tracks, m run the volume. It's a little button and it comes with an adhesive backing. It also comes with a little snap-in stand that is made to lock on to carriage handlebars a bike handlebars, steering wheel of the car. Uh -huh. And so in this way, you keep your tablet or your smartphone in your pocket, and you can control it just with this little, it's like the size of a quarter. And, uh, you know, it's Bluetooth, so it's about 40, the range is about 40 feet. And uh, it's under, suggested retail is twenty nine ninety five. It's just coming out now. Yeah. My guess when it hits Amazon, it's probably going to be more like twenty four ninety five. Yeah, it's um, like, it's, it's thin. It's very thin. It's like, a, as you say, like about the size of a quarter. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like if you put two quarters together. Right. Yeah, a 50 cent piece or something. Yeah, and, and it comes with uh, the stick-on thing, and it comes with the little steering wheel mount that's also good for bicycles. Yeah. So sounds clever. Under 30 bucks. Under 30 uh, bucks. If you're looking for an easy remote way to control your smartphone. Uh, or a way to mess with your friends. I recommend it. <laughs> That's right. Oh, come on. This thing will be so easy to hide, hide it in the palm of your hand and, and, and just mess with your friend's phone because you said <laughs> earlier 
they don't know what you're doing. It's yeah, so you easy. have to character their phone. Yeah, you know, mess with your friend's phone. I had a friend. I don't know if you remember the device called TV Off. I think. Oh it was yes, called. yeah, yeah. I I had a lot of fun with that, by the way. Yes. Well, he had a lot of fun with this. I I had to leave the hall because I was embarrassed. He would go at CES and shut off like 500 TVs. You know, like. <laughs> You know, like Panasonic would have a wall of TVs. Turn them all off. <laughs> and just with one button, just yeah. 500 TVs would just go off, you know, because they would they would make one picture with 500 sets. Yeah, exactly. And I'm thinking, those poor people who spent hours setting this all up, and now they have to go back and, and turn, them all on again. turn them all on again. I used it a couple of times. Uh, much to the chagrin of my wife, who said, "If you ever bring that again, I'm divorcing you." So, I, I, <laughs> but I walked. I, I did it. I, it was a, a sports bar, you know, and I they had the TVs over the bar. Oh so I my did, god! I've known that people did, and you turned yeah. it to what PBS? Yeah, no, I just turned the TV off. You know? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, but luckily, Craig Crossman does not <laughs> stick out like a sore thumb in the sports bar. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I went incognito, but I never did it again. I just had to do it because I interviewed the guy on the show, the inventor of that, and I and I had to try it just because I was doing research. He's like, uh -uh. Oh, oh, okay. I was. Okay. I had to research. I, I had to do it. You know. So when there did, did he become like a millionaire? Do you know? Because it was like it was like ten bucks or something, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was like maybe he must have. Yeah, but 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 you know, I, I don't know if he's still alive. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I, because I was young, young guy, and he invented it, and I think he came up with a, a, a second version, a, a a turn off, turn it off, what it was called, uh, version two. It was even more. Uh, it had more codes in codes it. Codes and more surreptitious. Yes. You could be more surreptitious. You had more control of it. But basically, it still basically turned everything off. And uh, and it was just a, a better version of it. He and, uh, I had him, I think, twice in the show. I, I thought it was great, you know, but, you know, it's... it's As long as it sticks to TVs and not pacemakers or something. No, you have to turn off pacemakers. Like that, we're okay. No. Yeah, right. Pacemaker be gone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what? You know what? I have a lot of fun. I just like to sit in the hospital waiting room. And <laughs> just, I need a seat, and I just hit pacemaker be gone, and suddenly someone falls right out of their chair. Right, just for the laugh. I understand this. <laughs> yeah. You get this great noise. This yeah. it, it falls, <laughs> falls right behind it. Well, you know, it. when I was a kid, this, this was a stupid, but didn't really affect that many people. Uh, a bunch of us. We, I went to school in Manhattan, so every day we would ten of us would have to go by subway, and and I guess I was just a prankster when I was a kid. So I I just bought a phone in my school bag and an alarm clock mm -hmm. and I would had the alarm clock set and I would just pull the alarm thing up so it sounded like a phone ringing I pull it up <laughs> put it down pull it up put it down pull it and then open my school bag and take out the phone <laughs> and just you know make an imaginary talk to my mother <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was quite amazing how many people thought oh my god how how do you get reception in here? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The subway. Now, the subway. of course, they have they have uh, antennas down the subway, so the uh, the subway. They do. Fortunately, not in the subways yet. No. Yeah, exactly. not the platforms. Not the platform. uh, I'm happy with that. Uh, in the cars, I prefer not. Well, you know, for those traveling uh, road warriors, uh, I'm sure if you've ever left your charger cable in a hotel room, oh my gosh. Well, we've got something for them. Yeah, this is called Charger Leash, and actually, I think we did it at last year's CES, and I was talking to the guy, and, and I said, you know, I see one problem with this. So what it is, is Charger Leash looks like uh, your regular phone charger, and you buy a phone specific, whether you need micro USB or you need an Apple connector, okay. and you plug it in the wall and then into your phone, and when you're rushing around the hotel packing to leave, you unplug your phone and you put your phone in your pocket. You forget to take the cable out of the wall. Mm -hmm. So after five seconds, an alarm goes off. So it's beeping <laughs> and flashing an LED. I'm still plugged in. I'm still plugged in. <laughs> so I, so I, I tried it and I said to the guy, you know, I love it. The problem is you have to unplug it and plug it back in 
if you're just taking your phone for the day, you're, you're staying at the hotel for five days, right. and, and I said, is there any way to shut the alarm short of unplugging it? And he said, no, but that's a great idea. Anyway, they now have Charger Leash Pro mm -hmm. with a snooze button. So <laughs> basically, where the, alarm, the, the tiny little box that has the alarm and the LED, you just put your finger on that, and that silences it for the rest of the day. But as soon as you plug your phone back in again, then it's armed. it rearms it. But there is a side benefit to this that, that Ben hit on uh, a few minutes ago, is at the airport when 90 people are charging their phone out of four outlets, yeah. if you're not paying attention and someone unplugs your phone, uh -huh. you're going to hear that alarm go off. That's and not... And know that. Wait a minute. Someone's trying Someone to has unplugged my. I mean, they could unplug it by accident, but it, it's a good way to know that you know, unless ten people are using charger leash uh, <laughs> devices. But um, it's twenty nine bucks. How loud is it? Uh, you know, it, it's not super loud. Certainly, you'll hear it in the hotel. And I think if you're sitting uh, fairly close by at a ho at, at the airport, you'll hear uh, it go off. And they're coming out with a new version where if you happen to have an Android device and an Apple device, the cable will have a, a one end will plug into the other. So it's it's a uh, iOS connector with a tiny little USB connector connected to it. And if you, you plug whichever one you need on top, and that way you can charge either device with the one cable. Okay, so and I think that's going to be like thirty dollars. So it'll be the the Master Pro or something. Yeah, the, yeah, something like that. <laughs> I, I you were... Charger leash. Okay, Charger leash. and it's available now. Available now. Twenty bucks. Okay, cool. Comes in one color, white. Looks like, but you can yeah, get... uh, white and black. I believe they make black cables also. Okay, good. All right. Uh, so this uh, next item, uh, this is kind of interesting because I love popcorn. Uh, if you want fresh popcorn for a large family or a big party, uh, this is this looks really cool. This is really neat. I I, I saw it at a, a houseware show, and they they were not making popcorn. They just showed me how it worked and how it stacked, and I thought it was very clever. It's a big bowl, and then it has a like size bowl that that when you put it in the cabinet, one bowl goes inside the other, so it doesn't take up a lot of room. Okay. But basically, it comes with a special cup, and the, the cup has markers inside for the amount of uh, popcorn that you put in it and the amount of oil. Mm -hmm. Then you open the top, and there is a metal container that you pour the uh, oil and kernels in. Mm -hmm. Out of the one cup, it's a two-sided cup. And then you plug it in, and it starts popping, but it makes up to 24, at its maximum setting, 24 cups of popcorn wow. at one time. That's and, really popcorn. Yeah, yeah, and the people at Hamilton Beach said that's three times more than the amount any of the competition uh, can make. Now, Hamilton Beach has been around for a long a time. A long time, and they make... They sort of specialize in making some bizarre products. A couple of years ago, I can't remember, I did it on the show. They made a, a, a three-story little device that you could make. You put you put an egg in the bottom, you put bacon in the middle, and I forgot what you put on top, and you made like one of those breakfast sandwiches that you would get at McDonald's. Yeah, egg McMuffin. Yeah, exactly. An egg, like an egg McMuffin. So uh, the cheapest price for this uh, was at Walmart, fifty nine bucks. Now, I remember Hamilton Beach when I was a kid. They 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 were the company that made the when you made milkshakes. You know, they would go into the uh, they would make the egg creams or something. It, it's a little you know little stir. You know, and and yes, they, yeah. Hamilton, Hamilton Peach, they had the name on it, and they were they were like the premier manufacturers of these little of these devices. Yeah, and they're still and it's clever. It's called the Party Popper. Yeah, so, so the Party Popper, <laughs> the Party Popper, yeah, the Party Popper. Yeah, very very clever. Yeah, that's and, pretty clever. And, and uh, hey, you know what? Well, you know, I saw um, who did I see at CES um, from uh, Computer America? 
Oh, you mean uh, uh, Grayson uh, Hamilton? Grayson oh. Hamilton or uh, Charles Sandow. Oh, Charles. Sandow? Yeah, Charles. And no. did, did he do a broadcast from there? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Because I, I was I was taping a special for uh, Twit, mm -hmm. and but as I roamed around uh, um, later was on, uh, he was gone. So I guess was Leo you, there? You, you do your whole two hours from there? Yeah, we did that from Showstoppers. Was Leo out there too, or? Oh uh, no, Leo. Leo doesn't go anymore. <laughs> okay. No, you know, Leo, Leo has a theory about CES that that it is actually quite correct. Mm -hmm. It is that there you have to you spend a lot of time mm -hmm. to find innovations mm -hmm. because everybody, unfortunately, is making the same thing. Yeah. And 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 another problem. This is just a beef of mine. Is that PR people don't know the marketplace. I, I ran into a, a guy who used to work at Toshiba, uh, do PR for uh, Toshiba, and uh, he said, "You know, I'm with this company now. We do an exercise band." And I said, "You know, it is a very crowded field." I said, "Does it do anything different?" He said, "Yeah. This is the only exercise band." That lets you take your pulse, well, it gives you your heart rate, without wearing a chest band. I said, "Are you kidding? There are about twenty exercise bands, really?" <laughs> 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 and and the, the number of people with a you know, Dick, this is the connected home. You can turn lights on with your cell phone. I just. <laughs> yeah, like for yeah. nine to ten years now. Yeah, exactly. So, hey, so Dick, really quickly, tell, tell, because we're almost at that. Okay, good. very good. Uh, so uh, next issue of Mad Magazine, um, I have things the White House is doing to protect the president, and <laughs> you, you, you're talking about games over at Gizwiz.biz. You can play the what the heck is it game. There's a picture of a gadget, and guess what it is, or make up a stupid uh, answer for what it can be, and every. Uh, game. I give away 36 autographed copies of Mad. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And uh, entering like year nine, we just passed 1,500 episodes of the Gizwiz on Twitch. Okay. All right. Well, great. Uh, listen, Dick. Stay, 90 stay seconds. With stay with us to the end again. Thank yep. you for for being with us here again. And uh, you can check it out at gizwiz.biz uh, and see all the other things that we didn't get a chance to get to tonight. Tomorrow night, uh, we're gonna have in the first hour worthy.com. Uh, it's, it's, it's a kind of lets you sell your valuables, uh, but uh, in the, in a different way than you know you have on eBay. It's a, it's an auction. It's an online auction house that allows you to send your stuff, sell your stuff, and uh, they're gonna we're gonna have them on in the first hour of the show. Second. And then in hour two, we'll do computer and technology news, brought to you by Slimware Utilities, the official optimization software of Computer America. Again, thanks. Dick DiBartolo, the Giz Whiz, for being with us here. Always a pleasure. And we'll catch you, what, next month, okay? The same yep, end of February. Last uh, Wednesday in February. Last Wednesday. Unless February. you think of a reason I shouldn't be on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You'll be on uh, the 25th of February with us. Right? Sounds good. All right, and that wraps it up. Thanks so much for being with us here tonight. And uh, Ben and I will see you tomorrow night, same time, same station. So until yep. tomorrow night, this is Craig Crossman hoping that your hard disk never becomes floppy. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good night, everyone. Thought for sure she was going to cut me off there. No. Ten seconds. Now she did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, soon you're going to have to get a new uh, outline because kids are going to go, what's a floppy? <laughs> Thank you for using <laughs> Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye. Yeah, I guess they will. Uh, uh, ben actually used to end the show with that. But I would say that Ben would say, "What's a floppy?" I don't know. Craig does it. He can have the same sign off for twenty some odd years. It's just like I use "What's a floppy?" for like three months, and I was like, eh, "That's enough." <laughs> <laughs> we should bring it back again for a while. Hey, everybody! Thanks for watching us on our video live video streaming page, uh, and uh, we will again see you tomorrow night. Thanks, Dick, again for being with us here tonight on Computer America. No problem. See you next month, guys. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Bye.